Hello everybody and welcome to the second Nail Talk Live from the heart of Holland from the Magnetic Nail Design Studios. Nail Talk Live is a show especially made by nail technicians for nail technicians. And uh, did you already subscribe to our YouTube channel, Magnetic Nail Talk? Because there you can see all the episodes. Tonight we have a full show with all ins and outs of ballerina nails, also named um, in some countries the coffin nail. So we're going to talk a lot about this nail. Yes, the ballerina nails has certain difficulties. It's a very popular shape, but you have to maintain the structural integrity of this nail. And sometimes people tend to either overfile it, overpinch it, applying too much product, and we're going to discuss those topics. We also have Gorgeous movies from Shariza, who is go going to do a brilliant power gel nail with gel polish. We have, uh, of course, Miriam Zwart, who is going to show, you, show us also a nail, ballerina nail, with the color concentrates. Uh, and yeah. when I asked Jessica to yeah. create something for a ballerina shape nail, she, she thought to herself, well, a ballerina, ballerina, what about the ballerina points or the ballerina shoes? And that was her inspiration for nail art. At the tech table, Debbie Heanusa is going to show us how to create a ballerina inlay nail with acrylics and with just fun, gorgeous nail art stuff on a special model. And we have a special guest. And a special model. Yes. <laughs> so, a full show. My name is Pepijn Borel. My name is Aukje Veldman. And this is Nail Talk Live. Before we go into the ballerina nails, I first would like to thank everybody that watched the first episode last week. And thank you so much for all the comments that we received. And of course, I want to announce the winner of the kits, which we uh, showed last week during Sherisa's uh, demo. And the winner of this kit is... Para -ba -da -dam, Malgatsa, Malgorsata... Valendes. I'm sorry if I don't pronounce your name correctly, from Ireland, but uh, congratulations, I have all your details, so we will make sure that you will receive this kit in your home as soon as possible. Congratulations. Later in the show, we have another chance uh, uh, for you to win a kit, uh, so uh, in whichever country you live, so please pay attention for the next uh, kit that's able to come to you to win. But now first, we go to Pepijn. Yes, and I'm here, of course, together with you, Debbie. Yes. Our uh, second show. Yes, our second show. Perhaps the anxiety is a little bit less this day. Oh, no. No? <laughs> <laughs> it's still the same, <laughs> because you were sitting on the tech table last week, and this week it's my turn. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, uh, I mean, I'm still... hello. <laughs> you are a born technician. Uh, we have a special guest. Yes, we have. And that's Natalia Kitsenka. Hi. <laughs> Welcome, Natalia. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much actually for inviting me and uh, it's really very nice and I'm proud to be here. Yes, we had a coincidence that you are here working together with me uh, behind yeah. the scenes on education and what you may not know is that we always do once a month an English a trainer talk live show specifically for magnetic trainers and as you are an international trainer for magnetic nail design and my partner in crime yeah. you are here <laughs> and we thought to ourselves let's ask you to participate in the English show to share your ideas so I said and you are an international you. trainer what does that mean um, actually, to be an international trainer, so it means that uh, you just have to understand everything about the product and everything about technique. And also you have to understand how people are learning because this is your knowledge that you have to give to your trainers that you are uh, also training and then they will spre spread it uh, to their own students. Actually, it's a very interesting job, I would say. Yes. You're traveling all over the world for us? Uh, yeah, and uh, it's uh, another part of a very interesting job. Uh, you are based in Kiev, in the Ukraine? Yes, I'm from Ukraine and I live in Kiev. And, uh, and it's a beautiful city, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud living there. Uh, and I'm proud that I also see different countries and different uh, people, just talk to them. 
and uh, also see what technique is more popular on s in some countries, why it's popular, and also what trend can be in the future. So mm -hmm. it's it's really very interesting. But again, to understand this, you also have to you have to feel the product. You have to understand how product is working. Well, Absolutely. Debbie, you've always also been an international trainer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. And like Natalia said, it's very interesting to see how every country has their own trends and have their own way of making yeah. nails and seeing nails in a different way. Uh, it's interesting. And I also think it's a challenge for a company to, uh, and for an international trainer uh, to actually... Um, yeah. Well, to meet up with all those demands in all those different countries, yeah, yeah it's uh, it's a challenge, but it's fun. Yeah, yeah. And also, it also helped me to understand that uh, there is no like ideal nail because mm -hmm. every person will see the ideal nail differently. differently. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I even <laughs> think that in uh, that even how people are looking at the profession of being a nail yeah. tech is quite differently interpreted throughout the world. Mm -hmm. uh, we are based in Holland here. It's something that people start to do as a side job, perhaps when they are taking care of children or want to work from home, while in other countries they really go into it as a, gen a profession, mm -hmm. um, a chance to outgrow themselves. It's a very interesting profession. Yes. yes. With yes. a lot of interesting <laughs> trends and, yeah. and fluctuations. And one of these trends for now, I think, two and a half years, is the ballerina nail. Mm -hmm. So what is your opinion about the ballerina nail? Well, I do prefer the name ballerina um, rather than coffin. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, uh, it's actually, well, some of them say actually there are two different kind of shapes, but I think it's, well, you have to look very closely if you want to mm -hmm. find the difference. Um, I do like the tapered, that it's more tapered yeah. style. I absolutely adore it. Um, but your it's a hard nail to do when you do it on forms, but you have to be exactly the same on every nail. Mm -hmm. uh, so y you have to be really a perfectionist. Um, but it can be very classy and very beautiful. Um, I don't know what your opinion is about it, but you sometimes see like uh, ballerinas that have a lot of product or are very flat. And it also depends actually uh, how a person who is creating these nails, uh, how she see the ballerina nail mm -hmm. because uh, many nail technicians uh, they just like to make a ballerina nail using just the tip yes exactly and then they have a problem because they're over filing mm -hmm. the sides mm -hmm. but it happened because they are not choosing the right size of the tip so mm -hmm. it's like a lot of things uh, going all together uh, yeah some people prefer to do ballerina nail on the tip which is absolutely okay some people prefer to make them on the nail form which is also okay Mm -hmm. So it depends, uh, and it can be ballerina just like a French, and it can be ballerina just uh, the full coverage, uh, just with red color or with any color. Or with inlay, as Debbie's going to show us. With inlay, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, is there, uh, Debbie, do you think there is a big difference between a tapered square and a ballerina nail? Yes, I do, absolutely. Is there more tapering? Yeah, or and ballerina is more tapering, yeah. Uh, it's like, um, uh, when you have a ballerina, it's like a 10% tapering, and the 10% mm -hmm. is more... I always, and I'm going to explain it on a tech table yeah. as well, um, but if you have your nail, you have like a finger and knuckles on the side, so if you hold on to the knuckle very... Um, yeah, and this, this angle, like at the 10% angle, then you get the really tapered one. And if you have a an tapered square nail, then you just take 5%. So you're going to stay in between with your file. Mm -hmm. And even when you are placing your form already, it's it's slightly different. With yeah. a form a placement in a tapered square, you use your pinching tools to make it a little bit tapered more on the top. When you're doing it with a ballerina, you can see it later on. I totally make it very pointy at the end of the form to get a totally different to um, make form. it a little bit easier. A tapered square is like this, <laughs> and a ballerina square <laughs> is like that. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Almost. Of course, you're going to show that at the table. There are difficulties, as you already said. What is the biggest difficulty of a ballerina nail? Where does it most often go wrong? 
Uh, so as I said, uh, uh, this is uh, if people are using uh, tips, then this is wrong um, choice of uh, the size of the tip. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if yeah, they are using the nail form, then uh, normally it's n it's not co completely tapered. So that's why sometimes it looks like a bit tapered square nail, but it doesn't look mm -hmm. like ballerina. Mm -hmm. And what is, in your opinion, the the biggest difficulty? To flat. Uh, the upper arch. Yes. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you can see it's, it doesn't really have like a structure all mm -hmm. over, but it's just they have the structure and the minute it comes off the nail, it's, it's totally flat. You mm. don't see anything, no curve, no C-curve or anything. And that's beautiful on when you look, uh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> but when you actually need to wear it for a very long time, you need to have the structure there. Yeah. Um, to make it wearable, yeah. Well, in my opinion, the biggest problem is the lower arch line. Yes. Because I've seen many ballerina nails that are beautiful when you look at them like that, but the moment when you start Look looking the at them like yes. that, they lose the lower arch lines. Yeah. But of course, we're going to go more into these details when we are at the tech table, the three of us. And we are now going to look at a movie, a video of Sherisa Klein working with Powergel, creating her version of the perfect ballerina nail. Hello everyone, I'm Sarisa, I'm back and I'm going to show you how I like to make a ballerina nail. A nail which is not too long, but long enough to create a beautiful shape. First, I'm going to prep the natural nail. I do that in one movement using the manicure brush and the prep and wipe. I press down on my pump, take a little bit of prep and wipe and then I scrub the nail using my brush. This is the new high-tech nail form by Magnetic. You can remove the paper from the middle part of the form and you can fold back the sides of the form to reinforce it. Remove the center piece and then the two side pieces of paper. I like to glue the front part of my form before placing it to make it a little bit more tapered. The ears are connected exactly and symmetrically. Open the form and you will see the tapered shape. I first cut space for the deeper hypernychium. After this I cut the sides of the form to create a good fit between the natural nail and the form. At the middle of the form, I'm going to count the lines, one, two and three. I'm going to cut and remove this. I have tried and fit this beforehand. This creates space for the fingertip. And when the form is correctly placed, I close the back flaps of the form. When it's placed, you check from this position, the client view, to see if the middle line of the form runs in line with the middle line of the finger. I'm first going to work with the power gel extender to make the elongation. Take a little bit of power gel extender and apply it on the natural nail. On this area, I'm going to press down the bead of power gel into the natural nail for a proper flow. And I will also make sure that the power gel connects to the form by pushing and pulling. It's always a combination of pushing and pulling. If you notice that your brush is sticking to the power gel, take some prep and wipe and continue pushing and pulling. Pushing and pulling. Make a very thin nail. Of course, I check the lower arch lines to make sure it's even and running straight out from the side walls. 
When you are content with the shape of the nail, cue the nail in the lamp for 30 seconds in the twin light. After the layer has cured, remove the form very carefully. Use the back end of a pusher to push away the form and you will see that the form pops free. Push the form together, pull it down and remove it gently. To make sure I don't use too much product, I'm going to finish the nail with two more applications of power gel. I'm going to start with the natural nail, making sure that the hairline of the nail is about a credit card thickness. I'm using power gel extender again and I place this on the middle of the nail. I press this from side to side like a pancake. Make sure that the gel covers the lower arches from left to right symmetrically and push and pull and push and pull. The hairline of the nail is now about a thickness of a credit card. When you're happy, cure the nail fully for 90 seconds in the twin light. When the product has cured, apply the second bead of product. I place this bead near the cuticle holding the finger angled down and using your brush to push the gel towards the cuticle and flatten it like a pancake from left to right. Push and pull and make sure that you spend enough energy and focus on your application to prevent over filing of the nail. Cure completely for 90 seconds. I need to file the nail, so I need to check if there is enough product on the side walls of the nail. I check this from the client view by holding the nail up and looking over the nail to see if the product is symmetrical from left to right. Then I remove the sticky layer of the power gel before filing. Pull the sticky layer towards yourself and prevent pushing it into the cuticle for overexposure. I use the 150 grit hygienic file and I first focus on the sidelines of the nail to create my ballerina shape. Then I use the file angle to file the free edge. Make sure the nail is nice and straight. Now I'm creating the lower arch lines coming straight from the nail. For the surface, I file the side walls going upwards to the middle of the arch. Now I hold the file parallel to the table and I flatten the arch of the nail to make sure it's not too curved. I do this on both sides and then I remove the dust. Turn the finger around to check to see if the nail is straight. Sometimes it can be a little bit crooked. Use the expert bit at 30,000 RPM, even out the cuticle application and make sure that the seal at the cuticle line is even. I hold the bit at an angle of approximately 45 degrees and I treat the side walls and the cuticle area completely. Now I will use my file very softly using the 150 grit. And in Russia, they call this photoshopping the nail. Go smoothly and gently over the nail in round movements, making sure that it's buffing the nail. And you will feel when you need to file a little bit more. When you're satisfied, use the manicure brush together with the prep and wipe to clean the nail and remove all the dust. I'm going to finish the nail using gel polish Mace Choice. It's not the easiest because the color red is always tricky, but when it's applied correctly, the result is amazing. I will use the brush Jessica's Choice to create an even and perfect application around the cuticle. First apply the gel polish on the middle of the nail in a straight line coming down. I don't start at the cuticle to prevent an excess of gel polish at this area. After the first application, I take the left side wall line and then the right side wall line and I will go slightly closer to the cuticle. With a pinch nail, you need to make sure that the lower arch lines are completely covered with gel polish. Just turn the finger in your hand. 
Take Jessica's Choice brush with a little drop of May's Choice Gel Polish and even out the cuticle area, detailing it until utter perfection. I chose to finish the nail with the Supreme Finish because of its extreme high shine and it will protect the nail beautifully. Now you can see a beautiful tapered ballerina nail in the most stunning color of 2019. I hope you enjoyed this version of my ballerina nail and I hope you will use these techniques and do this at home. Next week I will show you how to use wraps. I would also love to see you at the Nail Talk Live event on the 14th and 15th of September where I will give hands-on workshops. Until next time and thank you. Bye bye. What a great product control and what a clear explanation of Charisa. Charisa used uh, our newest nail forms, the high-tech nail forms, uh, biomagnetic of course, and she worked with the power gel. So let's see some more power gel. And I am sure that Debbie can also add on. Let's go to Debbie. Two of us, yes. not opposite each other, but no. next to each next other. Next to each other. Yeah, that's something new. There. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's cool. Well, yeah, exactly. So Debbie, you already applied the form, and I think the form application is one of the most important things in yes. this whole demonstration. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I already have uh, prepared the form and also uh, put the form on. So if you can go to uh, top screen, a top shot. Yes, as you can see, um, the form is quite long. I also use the new uh, magnetic forms. Uh, if we turn it to the side, it's easily to see that you can see I've pinched the top together in order um, you know, to get like a small of in between stiletto nail. Yeah. Um, but of course, I'm not all going to all the way to the pointy stop. I'm going to stop right here. So that already gives me the shapered look yeah. of the tapered look of uh, of the nail. Um, as you also can see, I have put out, cut away a little bit more of the form here because Natalia has a little bit, a lot of skin around her nail. Mm -hmm. So in order um, that they are not getting in the way and the form stays very wide, I cut this a little bit more out. Um, I also see that Natalia has a quite high domed nail. Yes. She has a quite high arch. Mm -hmm. So you apply the form upward to compensate mm -hmm. for that. Yes, exactly. Um, so if you're gonna see the top view yeah if you can see she has very a uh, curve in her nail so in order not to get like a very downwards angled nail if i would follow her natural nail it would look like this mm -hmm. um, so i have to compensate it a little because i don't want to have like too much product here all the way at the end of the extension edge it mm -hmm. needs to be nice and thin yeah um, so i have to compensate this piece so I always look the highest point of the nail. I will take that one and then I will take up all the way till the end of, of the, the length future extension. Of the yeah, of the future extension. And that has to be like one straight line. Then I know I have all um, this area to put some perfectly beautiful inlays in there yeah. and uh, do everything. Um, Probably so on fun. most people, the 
arch, so the high dome nail, the high arch, mm -hmm. is different on different fingers. Mm -hmm. So you have to compensate the forearm placement accordingly, I presume. Yes, exactly. So that's why the tip, by actually looking from the top view, mm -hmm. uh, it will give you, if you do this on every nail, it doesn't matter if you have a little bit of a higher nail or uh, a nail that's a little bit flatter, you always get like a little bit of the same angle. And you can, of course, you can add a little bit more product or not. It's, it's, it's up to you. But yes, every nail has to have like a close look in how to create um, the same nail on yeah. every nail. Yeah. And then a similar end result on all 10. A similar end result. Yeah. Okay. yeah that is the well. most important thing. Yeah. You're going to work with acrylics because yes. you're a real acrylics girl, to put it that way. Yeah. I am. Well, I love acrylic, so Me too. I understand. <laughs> Me too. You're first going to start with the nail bed uh, application, the extension yes. or the elongation of the nail bed. Yes, there are different ways uh, of creating a nail. Some of them prefer to have um, or to elongate the nail with, with just clear. Um, my preference has to just make the nail bed and then work on between with the color against it, fade it out, and then on top we put some little bit clear to hold yeah. it together. Mirjam Zwart will show us a little bit later how to make first a very thin clear layer and then work on top of that with the inlay. So it's a decision that you make. Yes, absolutely. It yeah. Is there a specific depth of smile line needed for a, for a ballerina? Yeah, I'm going to make Because you always see them smiling on stage yeah. <laughs> like an oh so is that also representative of the nail yes i do believe that uh, it, it's a little bit longer normally i would have like an elongation on our nail bed just the way up to the uh, number two or maybe three if it's very long but now we're gonna take it a little bit more um maybe in between three and four just see how it looks uh, but longer Okay. Uh, definitely. And she well. already has pretty long nail bits of her own. So. Yes, you have beautiful natural nails, yeah. Natalia. With uh, very high uh, side walls and normally to apply the nail form, I really have to cut very deep uh, the nail form so then uh, it will be perfectly applied on the, on, on the nail and you will, be t you will just enjoy your work. Okay, I feel the temperature a little. It's very yes, of warm. course. Always it's important mm -hmm. to first feel the temperature. So I'm going to put my beep just, just a little, yes. up here and I'm going to work against. First you're going to blend it in into the natural nail Yeah. at that high dome. Exactly. And so you're going to uh, leave the product in front of that high dome and there the thickness will be. Yes. And you're working with acrylic, so smooth, even application. Yeah, and I'm going to take the product all the way. So by the time it settles it down a little bit, mm -hmm. becomes a little bit firmer, now you're pulling it towards yourself to create that extreme deep natural smile line. Yes. Well, natural smile is perhaps not the correct word. <laughs> this length of nail is already an um, element. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's, it's an element. You could leave it like this. Well, you're missing the sidelines, of course, but... <laughs> Oh well, it's a tapered element. Yeah. A little bit of product here. Always be precise with your application, of course, mm -hmm. especially with your blending in this stage. What is your opinion about filing in the smile line? Uh, you can do that if you want to. Um, I am a competitor and I have really learned to make the smile line as smooth as possible, mm -hmm. but uh, without filing. Um, mm. So if you're, I don't know, because of the heat or an, another reason, you're not perfectly happy with the smile line, of course you can always file it to get it a little bit more um, sharp. sharp. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. And you, yeah. Natalia, do you tend to file the smile line when you're doing nails, nail extensions like this? Yeah, because I'm not um, their competitor. So that's why I'm I'm not competing on the uh, w with nails. That's why I'm always saying whatever happened, you can still correct it. And because ballerina normally it's a shape that uh, it's very popular in in salon. In salon, everything can happen. If something went wrong, then don't worry. Continue working. Then just correct your smile line, and it will be much quicker uh, as as an end result. Okay. So I yeah. prefer to smile. 
uh, to, to file. <laughs> well, and for sure to smile, of course. <laughs> So this was okay. your first application, now yeah. you're going to do the second application? Yes. Is this going to go completely towards the cuticle? Or uh, is yeah, this almost because um, I turn it around, you can see it's completely flat right now. Yeah. So I don't have, um, of course, I also need a little bit of a curve because that is also, uh, I think, one of the, the highlights of a ballerina. Mm -hmm. It has here a little bit of more um, volume. Yeah. So I'm going to add here a little bit more product and take it all the way up to the front again. Unlike a real ballerina, a ballerina nails has a curve. Yes. <laughs> Let's do the second application. We're just going to you're just going to show us how to blend it in and how yep. to build the structure. Yeah, and I need to be a little bit faster because it's very warm. Yeah. Yeah, mix ratio is the key to everything. Mm -hmm. Something that we will also talk about in a later show. Creating the cuticle seal around the cuticle line. Of course, always leaving a free margin. Absolutely, it's a very deep sidewall, so I need to make sure the product is wrapping around. Yeah, I think that only myself I, I can make my nails because I got used it and uh, I really have very high. Well, at <laughs> least you're somebody that always does her own nails because that's a very important thing, as a also as a beginner nail technician, always train on your own nails because. Yes. You are your best model. Exactly. Whatever shape nails you have. Exactly. Absolutely. Because you can see and check your work always. Well, while you are refining this uh, application, it mm -hmm. needs to cure and set up, of course. Yep. Yep. So we need a little bit of time. Yes. So I think we need to go to Aukje. Yes, because I have another set to win for you. Do you want to have a chance to win all the products Sherisa worked with in the previous uh, video? Then send me a photo of your favorite set of ballerina nails and you can send it to info at magneticneildesign.com. So info, uh, I said magnetic nail design, but it should be info at nailtalklive.com, of course. So info at nailtalklive.com. Send me a picture of your favorite set of ballerina nails and uh, you might be the one that win this kit. I also found some great ballerina nails on Facebook and on Instagram and other social networks. Uh, let's go to the first, which is from Angelica. And Angelica is a trainer from Italy. Angelica Valeskis Betancourt, and she made a beautiful shorter set of ballerina nail nails. Then we have a set uh, which, uh, of a student, which is actually trained by uh, Natalia Grichenko uh, from Lithuania. Elena Galatsiuk from Italy, with the beautiful flowers. Don't worry, everything is fine. And then, of course, Natalia Grichenko with a gorgeous uh, color concentrates mix with the yellow and the blue concentrates. Sabine Pinero, one of our trainers, uh, national trainers from France, and also our distributor in France. And she trained on the nail trainer because it's very important as a nail technician and as an international trainer to train often and a lot. And if you don't have a model, you can do it on the nail trainer or practice on yourself, as we just talked about. And then we have amazing ballerina coffin nails by uh, Vincent Nails from the US. And you can follow him on Instagram, of course. But look at these amazing type of nails. I really love them and I really love the fall colors because it's getting fall again in Holland and of course everywhere around Europe and the rest of the world. I think it's time uh, to go back to Debbie. Let's see what Debbie's doing. Debbie, yes. the new bed is ready. Yes, it is. So um, I just add some more volume to the nail bed, as you can see Very right smooth. here. Yes, it's smooth. I like to have it as smooth as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you're also going to use still some clear on top of it yet, so don't use too much in yeah. advance. Um, now I'm going to add uh, some color and I'm going to fade it out all the way up to um, the our end, end, of the, the end of the nail. Yeah. And you're going to use black? Yeah, I'm going to use black and with the fading I'm going to use clear. Okay. But I'm first going to s start with, um, with black. Black acrylic powder, of course, uh, black 
you have to be a little bit careful with black because of all the pigment in there. Sometimes you have curing issues if you apply too thick. Yes. So never apply too thick. No. And now you're bringing it towards that smile line, creating, of course, the deep black, dramatic, beautiful smile line. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody at home that knows how difficult it is to make a deep, beautiful, dramatic smile line is now in utter admiration for the fact that it just smooth, smoothly blends on. Of course, you're working on the form that gives you a little bit more time to, uh, to, to work because it smooths itself towards the natural nail. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I also do prefer when I'm using, when you love to prefer working on tips. Uh, a little tip is when you have like a very long nail, don't always buff the complete surface very rough, leave it a little bit smooth. Mm -hmm. It makes it also easier to guide uh, all the uh, all the product around, especially when yeah. you're using with yeah, uh, yeah. working with a deeper smile line or difficult nails. Yeah, good yeah. good tip. Don't make it too rough because you want to create uh, keep the smoothness of application. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I'm gonna make the smile smooth. And you're just correcting instead of filing. You're correcting with your brush. Yes. Of course, you have to make sure that your brush is clean when you do this. I mean, I yeah. speak from experience because I had to figure that that out the hard way. <laughs> I think we all did at some point, yeah. Okay. Sometimes okay. you really need to press on your smile line. Eh? Yeah. Just use a little bit of, of strength. Yeah, force. I, li I like to work with a little bit more str a strong brush. Yeah, to give you more power in your hands. Exactly, yeah. No. Your brush is your best friend, but also a tool that you have to understand how to use. Yes, absolutely. Now you're making sure that the, the blending really is even from smile line towards the free edge of the nail. Yes. Just adding a little bit. It's a little bit wetter. I don't know if you can see that at home, but it's a little bit wetter. Yeah. Making it a little bit easier to, to blend it to nothing. Yeah, exactly. And I mix it a little bit with clear. Oh, so now you do a double dip with clear. A double dip with clear. And you're going to use that to form the hairline? Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, I've never done that. That's new for me. I always used to work first with a clear layer and then blend my black on top of that. But this is, of course, also really easy to create that semi-transparent yes. effect. And a, a little bit stronger as well because there is clear in there. That's mm -hmm. yeah, okay. just great to look at somebody that really knows how to do nails. I love nails. I adore nails. My life is a nail, or my life is nails. I'll turn it around. Yeah. <laughs> just uh, Debbie is a perfectionist. We I already am. disclosed yeah. that last week. Yeah. Uh, so your eyes always see something but remember perfection is an opinion yes i, I know. often like to quote you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> perfection is an opinion so have your own opinion ready and also be satisfied with that <laughs> <laughs> vision of your opinion i know that's a difficult thing <laughs> yeah. but it's good to realize that perfection is an opinion oh. your opinion so inlay inlay yes i'm going to use some beautiful Crushed flakes. See Ooh, how amazing they are. Shining like diamonds. Of course, you can do everything in Leia. Uh huh. Of course. As long as it's in the nail, <laughs> yeah. when it's in there, it's inlay. When it's on top, it's not inlay. So no, exactly. Just. So how do you fixate this? Um, you can, of course, I always use a little bit of clear. Yeah, but clear acrylic. Yeah, clear acrylic, um, but also that's personal. I also switch my brush right now because I don't want to have the little griddle staining mm -hmm. uh, into the brush where I usually make my nail beds and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and elongations with. So um, I'm switching yeah. and just using, um, you can do different things. if you. You can you first put a little bit of bead of a little bit of clear and then put mm -hmm. the flakes in there or you just pick them up together and... Take a little bit of... Yeah, yeah. yeah just a Powder, dip. a bead yeah. on your brush and just yeah. dip it into the glitter yeah. flake like you're doing now. Like I'm doing right now. So if you see that on screen, you can see that it's a bead covered with glitter. Yeah, exactly. Press it on. And the thing with inlay design is that a little goes a long way. 
So don't think to yourself, well, I still have space there because I have a high domed nail so I can go a little bit thicker. That's not needed. Less is more, but do focus your attention within the sidelines of the nail because that gives you the room to file. And of course, keep it off the nail bed. <laughs> yeah, you can play a little around with it. You don't have to be like all the way up to um, to the corners, even though you can even also leave a little bit space around um, the nail bed that makes that gives you like the really black yeah. line around it. That's just just personal. Yeah. Yeah, and it also depends on what you want to go and do next with it, mm -hmm. because sometimes you want to do a nail art on top of it, or perhaps some rhinestones. Yes, exactly. Or Acrylic flowers, as I showed last week. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, it's it may be important where you put the glitter or not. It depends on the next step. Yeah. So you're go now going to take another color? Yeah, no, I'm going to no. use a little bit of the same color. Mm -hmm. And just... Go and into the corners of the smile line. Into the corner of the smile line. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, I would say that uh, the most... Uh, beautiful part of the smile line is a uh, smile corners. I agree. I yeah. agree with you. As long as they are sharp, perfect, yes. and smiling exactly. like crazy. <laughs> also with French manicure. I love mm -hmm. French manicure smile lines. Me too. As you know. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Really, uh, your nail uh, bed elongation is just beautiful. As yeah. Thank you. Okay, now I'm going to switch over by dipping it into two different glitters. Mm -hmm. and I think a little too much. Uh, wrap it around. And it's a little bit dry, so I'm going to yeah. take a little bit more liquid. And just pull it down, press and pull, yeah, press and press pull. and pull, press and pull, and get it all the way up to the end. Look at the shine. And a little bit more. Like you said, less is more, so not too much, especially for the fading all the way to the top. Mm -hmm. You know what Liberace always said? Too much is just marvelous. <laughs> okay. So, capping. Capping, yes. Because we need to go to the next step, because we have another movie waiting. So how do you cap a nail like this? Um, yeah, just make sure, but not like too much um, in once, like take a big, big, and you can do that, but now for now it's warm. So yeah. I'm going to choose to do it in parts. Um, first, I'm going to check if I still have room to pinch it. I do, mm -hmm. uh, because mm -hmm. it's a high pigment acrylic yeah. on underneath, so you have more time. And so I'm first going to choose to actually um, cap in all my funny stuff and glitter. And now I just use the flakes, but you can use all different kind of diamonds yeah. or opals, Glitters. whatever. Yeah. I'll um, give you a new brush wipe. Yes, thank you. Because you're switching to switching to your other brush yes, again. Yes, I'm switching to my other clear. brush. Yes, and I'm working with clear. So I'm first going to take a bead. Okay, a, a medium size. A bead. medium size. Bead. Medium wet. Yes. And you apply that, yeah. Yes, on top, going all the way up. And you smooth it into the nail bed. Yes, it's it's like the first step when I apply um, the smile line over yeah. the long and eight. And be very careful because you see now I'm pressing a little bit too hard and if it's you have a lot of glitter on there and you're pressing too hard you take all the glitter uh, up again you pull it away yeah so you first focus your attention on the free edge yes so the lower part of the nail after which you're going to co connect everything together yes. to make the correct structure yes so now I know for absolutely sure it's completely kept as you can see, I hold my brush completely flat on the nail mm -hmm. and then smooth it out. Yeah. And, a little and if bit we more check from the side view perhaps as well, 
but we can see how the structure now is of the nail, that it's a relatively, I don't want to say flat, but it's a very even, even. surface already. Yeah. Very smooth. Mm -hmm. That's the word I was searching for. Well, if you eventually, if you want to perfect it and you have like an even smooth surface, it's much easier to see where maybe the nail needs some more structure mm -hmm. in order than when you have a nail that has like hump or bubble over <laughs> everywhere and it's not completely even. While you are finishing with capping this nail, mm -hmm. and of course pinching it, but we'll focus on that also in another show, we have another demo for you, and that's Miriam Zwartet, and she's going to show us how to create her version of a ballerina nail with first a clear lower layer, first layer, and with color concentrates. And with these cells you can create everything that you can imagine. Hi everybody, nice that you're watching again. Today I'm going to show you how to make a ballerina nail with gel. The products that I will use are Power Gel Clear, Nude, Color Concentrates, mixed with Gemstone Gel, and with this I'm going to make a stained glass inlay design. I already applied the form. I'm going to start. First I'm going to create the extension edge using Power Gel Clear. I will use the double sided Power Gel tool. I'll take a little bit of power gel clear, put it against the natural nail, and I'm going to divide this evenly on the form, creating the total free edge of the nail. The first layer of clear is very thin. Make sure it's really thin, because on top of this first layer I'm going to apply the inlay products, and then another application of clear. With Power Gel Nude I'm going to create the nail bed. First I'm pushing it against the cuticle and then I pull and push towards the free edge to create a smile line. Using the tip of my brush I'm creating the wall of the smile line so that the smile line can be sharp and even. The Nude Power Gel will be cured one and a half minutes in the twin light after which I will file the nail bed in shape to create a, the sharpest smile line. Remove the sticky layer using prep and wipe. I first start with filing the surface of the nail bed. I will use a 180 grit hygienic file and with the emery board I'm sharpening the smile line, finishing with the sapphire file for ultimate perfection. After this I will remove the form very carefully, open it at the back and pull it down. For the inlay design part I'm going to mix my gemstone gel, which is clear, with the color concentrates in the three primary colors, which you can use to create any color that you desire. I have applied them on my palette, I mix them, and when I have the desired color I mix this concentrate into the clear gemstone gel. I've made three different colors, purple, turquoise and fuchsia, and of course you can do this ahead of time, before the client is there, then you can save it in your paint palette box. That makes it a little bit faster. I will apply the colors in lines on the free edge, using a fresh brush, and then I'm going to pull through these lines to open them up and create the Tiff Stiffany stained glass effect. The gemstone gel won't run, it stays where you put it, and then when everything is placed you take your fresh brush and just pull lines through it, seeing the clear underneath. This goes in the twin light for 30 seconds. I will cap the free edge using power gel clear on the free edge. Just take a little bit and even out the surface of the nail, making sure that you minimize filing to a minimum. Check every angle. When you are happy, you can cure it about 20 to 30 seconds in the twin light, after which I will pinch it. I'm using an expert pinching tool. First check to see if it's cured and just give it a light pinch. 
Then apply the transparent gel clamp and go in the light for one and a half minute. Remove the clamp after cure. Remove the sticky layer and now I'm going to file the nail. First concentrating on the lower arch. Surface filing making sure everything is smooth and even. Work in a system to make it easier for yourself. Remove the dust. To perfect my application at the cuticle area, I'm going to use the expert bit at a 30,000 RPM and then I'm going to buff it before sealing it with top gel. Hold the file in a 45 degree angle, concentrating on the cuticle area. This seals the product to the natural nail. Then, using a hygienic buffer, I'm going to buff the surface of the nail to remove any scratches and prepare for top gel application. Repeat all the filing steps using your buffer. Remove the dust. Sharpen the lower arches using a sapphire file and they will be razor sharp. The nail is finished and I'm going to finish it using improved supreme finish for a super high, ho high shine and this needs to be cured for one and a half minutes in the twin light. You can see that the nail is nicely tapered, the real ballerina shape, without jeopardizing the lower arch lines and without jeopardizing the integrity of the nail. Of course you can create all different designs using the gel concentrates and gem sound. Thank you for watching and good luck with this design. Yes, and we saw that uh, Miriam really prefers to have the first thin layer of clear yeah. and then to work with that or yeah. something on top of that. But she worked, of course, with gel also. Yeah, with gel, so it's, it's a different thing. I actually, well, I, I also prefer to have like first sculpt the nail, but then file it because then I will file it yeah. and then put the form on again and then apply um, uh, the gel application. But yes, I totally understand why you yeah. just first use a clear layer because it's so much easier. It gives you more stability. So yes, yeah. That's the nice thing with these Nail Talk live shows is that we can show you all different ways to roam because just a little bit later, Jessica will also show you what her interpretation is of a ballerina nail. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, you pinch the nail, Natalia. Yeah. Are you still breathing? <laughs> yes, it was absolutely, absolutely okay. Yeah, proper pinching is painless. Proper pinching is painless. And we'll yeah. go into the secrets of pinching in a different show, but now yeah. you're going to concentrate on defining, redefining your ballerina nail. Yes, refining. Um, but I'm first going to start with the extension edge, because the extension edge needs to be very, well, I think straight. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to use just a 180 grit file and hold it, I don't know if you can see it in there, but very... Um, You're supporting it with the f your fingers? Yeah, I'm supporting it with my fingers. To prevent real movement of the mm -hmm. free edge, even though it still seems to move, but that's because of the length. It's because of the length. Yeah, it's not because it's flexible. It's very... Uh, strong. Very strong and very hard. Yeah. Are your filing steps always the same, whether it's yeah. um, a ballerina, a tapered square, a real square? Well, yes, uh, of course, you have a little bit of an adjustment uh, here and there because you don't know, yeah, you don't always use exactly the same steps when you're filing a stiletto instead of a square nail. Mm -hmm. However, um, the first steps are actually always the same. It's just the extension edge and the elongation that's a little bit different. So that that's where I, well, just maybe a little, but not too much. I yeah. I do think they're almost exactly the same. Because you now first do the free edge. I always or the start with the free edge. Hairline. Yes, hairline. Then you would do the side lines. Yeah, well, not the yeah the side, but it's like uh, the whole area. If you can see on yeah. the camera, um, this is my first my beginning. Then I'm going to use this whole area to thin it a little bit more out before I'm going to correct uh, the lower the arch. Lower arch. But you are correcting the shape as seen from top view. 
Yeah. That is what you're doing. Yeah. You're creating the shape. I'm creating the shape. Um, I do feel, um, as a ballerina as well, that the volume has to be like more on top. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to file a little bit more in upward position, and I'm gonna. It's not a roundish, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's really like an upwards movement towards the middle of the uh, of the arch. Yeah, and I always look um, before I start filing. I'm gonna turn it a little bit around. As you can see, the nail is very, it's thin. I don't need to file that much in order to mm -hmm. get the credit card thickness that no. I prefer. Um, so it's just a little bit of correcting. So don't push too hard. Don't make it too hard. Um, it's, it's just really, really uh, shaping. Correcting the nail, or as Sharisa has said, that it's the photoshopping of the nail surface, but then with your file instead of with Photoshop. Yeah, exactly. Just smoothing. Of course, you That's feel beautiful. also. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you also feel through your file yeah. where you have to file it. Eh? Yeah, I absolutely feel it. I do prefer to have like an upwards movement and then go downwards to really get to hear the smooth connection between um, the Cuticle product. Area yeah, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, in the sideline. And when I have this area, um, well, it's not really refined, but it's refined enough, mm -hmm. then I switch all the way to the other side and turn it up. Again. Which was not filed until now. No. Nothing was done, only the yeah. hairline. Uh, only the hairline, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. So the upwards filing towards the middle of the upper arch. Smoothing, blending, yes. feeling the surface feeling of the nail. Feeling the surface of the nail, yeah. So as I can feel here, of there's a little bit of product, and I just file. Sometimes people think that they really have to use pressure when they're filing, mm -hmm. it, that it's the pressure that does the job, mm -hmm. but it's actually the file that, just the, uh, that mm -hmm. does the job. It's yeah. just a matter of holding it correctly. Yes, I agree. Um, when you use too much pressure, you don't going to be long in our profession because <laughs> it's not good for your arms and your shoulders <laughs> and it's not necessary. Just let the file do its job. When you're finished with these steps, uh, then are you going to focus on the middle of the nail or are you first going to create the lower arch lines? And uh, Because that was my main difficulty with ballerina mm -hmm. nails. Of course, that lower arch, it disappears. It mm -hmm. goes everywhere except there. Mm -hmm. So what is your order? Well, uh, the order is your lower arch are very important. But if you are, s let's say, if you have like a lot of product on top of here and you're matching your lower arch to the product that's on top of here, and then you probably your lower arch will be out of shape or maybe mm -hmm. consist because you want to have like um, an, an even, e an even symmetrical, e symmetrical lines. lines, yes. Um, so if you first focus on this line and then at the end you are um, yeah, completing your lower arch mm -hmm. and make it matching with your upper arch, then you will have Mo well, 90% of the times you will have a mm. correct lower arch. So just to repeat for myself, perfect. Make sure that the upper arch is perfect mm -hmm. and then focus on the lower arch to make it match exactly. to the perfect upper arch. Exactly. Oh. Especially when you find it very hard to, um, yeah, to have a correct lower arch, that can actually help to make you see mm -hmm. uh, how far you can actually file or not file. Yeah. 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 Well, filing is a whole mystery in itself, it of is. course. Eh? Yes, it is. Yeah. Just have a look at what we exactly what we have now. Yeah. And now, as you can see, let me remove a little bit of the dust here. You can see where I just filed and where I didn't file the nail. So I, hi I have like the upper arch here on top of the nail. Um, you can choose what you want to do. Some prefer to file the elongation first and then go to the cuticle line. I prefer to go first to the cuticle line, make sure that my apex, mm -hmm. so the highest point of the nail is on the right uh, placement, and then I will go to the elongation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you have like a different, if you always divide the nails in in zones? In zones, yeah. And it doesn't matter if you have a stiletto or square nail or salon nail, just divide it in zones. It will make it much easier um, to always have the same file steps. You're yeah. just overwhelming me with all of this information. <laughs> I have to start digesting this. Yeah. You have to finish the nail. I'm going to finish the nail. Because time is pressing. We go to Alkir. <laughs> 
Yes, and Jessica is a real master in hand painting on the nails. Uh, I know Jessica for many years now, and in the past I remember Jessica as making a very beautiful hand-painted tattoo-style type of nails. But in the many years she developed much, much much more in hand painting and she makes really great designs in this. So let's see what Jessica's interpretation of the ballerina is. The ballerina shape. It's the most popular shape there is and when Papain asked me to make a design on ballerina nail, I got my inspiration from the shape itself uh, and I thought about the belly shoe, the belly point as they are called in the world of ballet. And I'm going to hand paint it on this nail. Using the master paint, I prepared the base using two coats of nail blade extender, finished with top gel and just buffed it to make it down. And I'm going to mix my master paint using pure pink, burgundy red and ivory master paint. Some people that attend my classes, well, I will tell them that in the past when we were young and wild, and in the time when I was actually following the training in Papain's classes, it was always a difficult dilemma to make the tip of the brush nicely pointed. And when you are working with your bra uh, brush, sometimes it's opening up a bit. And how we did it in the past, we were putting the brush into our mouth, that, and of course it's not something that we can do nowadays. And now as a trainer, we have to create our own tone to straighten and sharpen our tip of the brush. And to do, I will take a nail pipe, I will wet it with water, and will fold it double and put it next to the paint. As this nail wipe is wet and damp, I can roll my brush to clean it and to bring it back to a sharp point. Roll your brush and also it absorbs water back to the brush because the nail wipe is wet. I'm using water to dilute the master paint, otherwise the paint is a little bit thick, which is ideal for one stroke technique of course, but for now we need thinner paint. I mix my paint, not with the brush as you can see, I'm using my old cuticle pusher, which I don't use on clients anymore, and it's easy to mix my paint with this old tool. I'm going to start with a little sketch on the surface of a nail. I will need it as a guide for my hand painting. I will make a sketch of the belly shoe and later I will add on shadows, lines and highlights. I will start with the biggest element of my design and I will use for this the tailor brush number one. The tailor brushes number one and two are very good for fine lines and for very fine details I prefer to use the master detailer brush. With the tailor brush I am creating the outline for the belly shoe. I am just making quite a big design as you can see. When we are working with paint don't apply it in thick layer or too wet. Otherwise the top gel can crack on that area where paint was applied or too thick or too wet. This is the area where the top gel can crack. I always advise to use two coats of top gel. Especially it's important to apply two layers of the top gel when you want to have a matte effect on a nail. So, first seal a nail with base and top or traditional top gel and then use the extreme matte top gel. If you don't do this and you will apply the extreme matte directly on the master paint, it loses a bit of its color and it happened to me once and it's really bad but luckily I'm very fast and I did repeat the design but of course it took some time to fix it. So, first a normal top gel and then use the extreme matte. Let's continue. These belly shoes need ribbons. First, just a little sketch. I'm just drawing the lines of the ribbons going over the nail next to the shoe. Just imagine them in your mind and create them. 
I am adding a bit of the highlights into the middle to create a little bit of the depth. If you have new master paints, you always have to shake them really well prior for use. Because we add special oil to the master paint and this oil ensures that you can use the master paint for very long time. You have to shake paints properly before use for good mixing, but you have to do it only once. Let's take a brown paint. And I'm going to create the outline of my sketch with the brown color, not black, because black color will be too strong for this design. I'm using the master detailer brush, and as you can see, it's really straight on the nail. I always think of the ceiling to make sure I hold my brush straight to the nail. Now I'm adding the shadows with the tailor brush. First I'm working on outlines of ribbon and now I'm adding the shadow over the shoe, where the shoe is a bit deeper, then underneath the shoe, next to the shoe and with this we are creating the extra dimension. And I'm going to finish my design with the white color, so then uh, with this color I'm going to create the highlights and then uh, it will be like 3D effect. When you are making the shadows, uh, you have to be sure that you are using wet paint, so then your shadow will be not too dark. And let's finish our design with white color, with highlights, so then we will have really beautiful effect with highlights and we will have very nice optical effect, like we have a nice belly shoes on a tip. Miriam Zwart is going to show to you how to build inlay ballerina nail and you will see it later. And whenever everything is ready, then you can see the end result. Belly shoes, points. And thank you very much for watching. And next week I'm going to show to you how you can combine products all together and also techniques. See you, bye! What a beautiful ballerina nail and what a beautiful ballerina shoes. I really love them. Um, do you want to have some more information about the products of Magnetic? Or do you want to have some more information about our distributors, maybe? You can always send me an email at info at nailtalklive.com and uh, we will gladly answer it with all your questions about products, distributors, becoming a trainer, becoming a distributor maybe. Uh, so don't hesitate. Please send me an email, info at nailtalklive.com. And of course, you can also follow us on the social channels, Instagram uh, at uh, nail underscore talk underscore live or of course the magnetic nails instagram page or the facebook page of magnetic nails and don't forget to subscribe to the youtube channel magnetic nail talk to see more videos and more step-by-step -step demos time to go to the end result time to go to debbie yes debbie is finished with filing yeah. and you are actually applying now the top gel yes i am and because it's an acrylic you're using a special top gel yes i'm using the supreme finish it's really my ultimate favorite there's a uv blocker in it and it just enhances the beautiful color of the nail bed yeah. and all the sparkling that's going inside yeah. In there yeah <laughs> and it's also super shiny yes it's super shiny i absolutely adore it so why you are oh my god can you just see that natalia isn't that just I a jewel? I want a set. Well, <laughs> perhaps we can arrange a set for you. <laughs> perhaps also on side shot, shot, just to see that the arch lines. Wow. Just amazing. Super cool. Yeah, let me turn it around so you can see. I don't know if you can see it from the side or up of you. I didn't cure it yet, so to be careful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a very nice even C curve. Yeah. Pointed like a ballet slipper. Yes. yes. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Super. Well, I think Natalia needs to go in the light, and yeah. we will tell <laughs> you what we are going to do next week. So, next week we have uh, a different thing to do. 
we have we are organizing Nail Talk Live event. So it's yeah. an event in Holland, especially for the people that are following us on Nail Talk Live. And we have Jessica, Sherisa, and Miriam that are going to show us how to combine techniques, how to create uh, beautiful nails and nail art. And uh, we are going to show the new products. Yes, we have some new products yeah. that are coming up. So it's very excited again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's just great to do this for you. But don't forget to subscribe because Nail Talk Life is made with love for all of you. See you next week. See you next week. <laughs>